Hey everyone, it's Mr. Rosen here again. Uh, today's video, what I'm going to be doing is showing you how to figure out the equation of a quadratic given a table of values. So let's give you a table of values here. And we're going to go negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0. And the values we're going to use is negative 31, negative 16, negative 7, negative 4, negative 7, negative 16. Now, let's assume that we need to get the equation in the form of y equals a bracket x minus h squared plus k. So this is a pretty typical type of parabola. Now, if we're looking at this table of values, what I want to know is where is the vertex? So if I'm looking at the y values, they kind of go down to negative 4, and then they start going even more negative. It's, it, it's almost like it mirrors around this spot right here. If you look at the y values, it's the same on both sides. It kind of cuts it in half almost. In that location, wherever the y values change directions, uh, that's going to be your y-intercept. So if you sort of imagine this graph, you know, it's, uh, it looks like it's going to go up to negative 4, and then it kind of goes even more negative. So it goes like that. <clears throat> that's negative 4. So we know that this right here, this is the vertex. That, that is for sure based off this table of values. And if you know the vertex, then you actually can figure out the h and the k from our equation. So the h, this is our horizontal translation. This is like the left and right movement. Horizontal translation. The k, that's your vertical translation. This is how much up and down it is. And then a is your stretch factor. So the h and the k I know based off where that vertex is. So if I use that point, I can write this. I can write y equals a bracket. I'm going to write x plus 2 squared minus 4. Your typical point, your typical vertex is 0, 0. In this case, our vertex is negative 2, negative 4. So that means it moved left 2, down 4. So if it's going to go left 2, you have to put x plus 2 in the brackets. If you're going to go down 4, you put minus 4 at the end. So this is 2 thirds of my equation. The next thing I need to do is figure out the a value. And to figure out the a, what you're going to do is you're going to sub in any known point. So any other point in this table of values, I can sub it in for x and y and isolate it for the a and solve it. So I'm going to pick the easiest point I can see. And I'm going to sub in the point negative 1, negative 7. I'm going to sub that one. Those are basically the smallest numbers I can see. The negative 1 is like my x. The negative 7 is my y. And let's plug them in and see what we end up getting for a. So we get negative 7 equals a bracket negative 1 plus 2 squared minus 4. And we get negative 7 equals a bracket negative 1 plus 2 is positive 1. So I'm just using my rules of bed mass to solve this. 1 squared is just 1. So we're going to get negative 7 equals a times 1 is just a. I don't have to write that even. Bring neg negative 4 to the left side. It becomes positive. And we get negative 3 equals a. So that was the stretch factor. So that's the last thing I needed for my equation. Now I know every little piece. I know the a, I know the h, and I know the k. So let's rewrite it. With, as our final answer. So therefore, y equals, the a was negative 3, x plus 2 squared minus 4 is the equation. And that's, that's definitely the right answer for this one. So again, the steps are, you want to identify where the vertex is, use that to get your h and k, once you know your h and k, you sub in any known point, anything, as long as it's not the vertex, any known point, and you should be able to get your a value, your stretch factor. And uh, yeah, there's an example. So let's do one more quick one. And uh, just for practice here. So same idea, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. 
And we're going to have 35, 27.5, 25, 27.5, 35, 47.5. Okay, this one's got decimals, but it'll still work out. So this one, when I'm looking at it, I got to figure out, okay, where is the vertex here? And I'm looking at the Y values, and I can see that it starts off 35, then it goes 27, then it goes 25, then it goes back to 27, back to 35. This point right here, this has to be the vertex. It's sort of symmetrical around that point. You can see how it's going down to 25, and then it starts going back up. So if that's my vertex, what I know is if I'm comparing it to 0, 0, and in this one, it's 0, 25. What I'm noticing is that the x's stayed the same. So it did not move left or right. But it did move up and down. So not up and down, but it actually it moved up. Instead of being at 0, it's now gone up to 25. So in our equation, a bracket x minus h squared plus k, I know this for sure. I know that y equals a bracket x minus 0 squared. It's not moving left or right. And then the k means it went up 25 because the k value is your vertical shift up and down. And it moved up 25. Now the minus 0, I, I don't need to write that. So I'm going to just clean it up and put a x minus 0 is just x. So ax squared plus 25. There's my equation at this point. Now again, to get my stretch factor, my a value, what I have to use is any known point. The point I'm going to use that looks the easiest to me would be 2, 35. So sub in point 2, 35. I'm going to use that one only because there's no decimals. It looks nice and simple. The 2 is my x, 35 is my y. So let's plug it in. 35 equals a bracket x is 2. 2 squared plus 25, and we get 35 equals a bracket, 2 squared is 4, plus 25. We're going to bring the 25 to the left side, make it negative. You always switch the sign when you bring it to the other side of an equation. And 25, sorry, 35 minus 25 is 10. And then we're going to divide both sides by 4 to get a by itself. And this would become 5 over 2 equals a, or it might be just 2.5 equals a. This one uses a lot of uh, decimals, so 2.5 probably is appropriate, or you could just leave it as a fraction of 5 over 2. So our actual equation then would be y equals, the a is 2.5, and then it's x squared plus 25. I'm basically just subbing it into this equation right here. That's our equation that was finished. We just didn't have the a in it. So that's it. So that's our equation. And uh, like I said, this, this will work for pretty much any table of values as long as you're trying to get an equation of the form y equals a bracket x minus h squared plus k.